Hey guys, it's Bridgette and I am in the garden, the beautiful thriving garden that is full of plants and weeds. Unfortunately, we've had a very wet spring. Well, fortunately and unfortunately, we've had a very wet spring, which means lots of plant growth. I wanna talk about weeds because it is something that new gardeners have a really hard time understanding when to pull, when to mow, when to compost, you know? And I totally get that that's confusing. And it's also really hard to pull a plant that's like pretty, right? So I wanna talk about how we do that on the farm and in the garden and, and some skills that you can use in your garden to have a really well-managed, mostly weed-free, no garden's ever weed-free garden. And before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So I'm here in the front garden and you can see it is exploding with growth. 90% of the things that you see here, I did not plant. I didn't plant that lettuce. I didn't plant these carrots or this alyssum. I mean, I didn't plant these radishes, the cilantro, the nasturtium. Things are just popping up. All the borage you see, didn't plant it. It has popped up because I let things go to seed over the years or potentially we've done. This lettuce is from a past seed production. Birds, wind, things take it different places and now I've got some lettuce over here. Now, although this looks absolutely stunning and it's beautiful and it's full of growth, it is still a little concerning in the sense that I need to manage this. It's very easy to let this get out of control and then come, you know, middle of summer when I'm really busy with tomatoes and cucumbers and squash and everything else, this starts to look like a real mess. And I've got weeds that are going to seed and causing more trouble. So I wanna talk a little bit about that, but the first kind of disclaimer I wanna make is that the term weed is one that everybody has a different uh, definition of. Basically, weed is any plant that is in your way or in a spot that it shouldn't be. And what that means is that a plant that one person might be like, oh, this is a weed. Well, it's actually great for pollinators. There's a lot of other benefits to it. You know, um, maybe it's edible. Um, so what I say is a weed is not necessarily what you think is a weed or vice versa. But I am gonna tell you some of the thought processes around when I decide whether or not something might have to get pulled. So number one, particularly in a vegetable garden, if something is getting overcrowded, that's a weed. I need to pull it out. And it could even be just like, a, you know, squash plants that are too close together. And I'll actually give you an example. So like, this is a beautiful hollyhock, okay? And this is, this is just popped up. It's gonna go to flower soon, so I could leave it, but it is also literally in the middle of our walkway, right where we take our wheelbarrow through the yard. Not a great spot for it. So, and because I've ignored it and I've let it get this big, it's probably not a good candidate to dig up and move. I'm probably just gonna have to get rid of it. Because what is going to happen is as this bloom gets really big, Soon as it's blooming, I guarantee someone's gonna come through here and break it and then I'm gonna be really sad. So this would be considered a weed, even though it's obviously a hollyhock. I have chard, okay? I've got scabiosas. I've got little baby carrots. I have tons of stuff that's growing, but not necessarily in a convenient place for me to do the work that I need to do. Another example is like all of this borage. Okay, this borage looks amazing. But for those of you who have grown a garden in zone nine and 10, you know that borage gets out of control. Just like nasturtium, it really takes over everything. And what's sad is in here somewhere, which we can't see because it's totally overgrown, I have some beautiful, oh, here we go. Here's some beautiful freesias that I don't even get to enjoy because the borage is totally taking it over. And I love freesias. They're amazing smelling and you know, they only, they're bulbs, they pop up once. And I'm gonna miss out on all of this because of this borage. So I would consider some of this as being weedy. I need to get rid of some of it. I also need to pull some of it out for airflow. Things are really growing way too tight and too compact and plants are not gonna thrive. I have a beautiful sunflower here. I want that to grow. Well, it's not gonna grow very well when it's so close to all of this other stuff. So that would be something to think about is cleaning up around here. I'm sure you guys have all seen this. So this is actually a very delicious edible. It's a Chinese chrysanthemum. It's the really pretty yellow flower that you see all over the sides of the roads in Southern California right now. 
looks like a little sunflower. Um, totally edible when it's at this stage. Actually, if you go to many um, markets, you'll actually find these guys. If I let that grow and I let that flower, it will be everywhere. I will totally regret it. So I'm pulling that up. And then we have some more of the traditional weeds in here. You know, everybody recognizes this as being a weed. I really want to get it up before it flowers. I've got squash because I did, I cleaned squash seed over here. So there's a lot of things going on and I need to go through here and clean this up. Now, again, I'm really trying to speak to the hearts of new gardeners who have a hard time like thinning their carrots. I know that's hard. I know it's heartbreaking, but you have to think about the good of the benefit of the whole garden. And going through here and doing some really important cleanup is going to prevent diseases or at least manage them better. Like this squash is never gonna produce squash. It's on the north side of my house. It's way too shady. It's way too moist. It's just gonna get powdery mildew, which is gonna spread to all of the other plants. It's gotta get out of here. This um, borage here needs to be thin because I don't even have a walking path. Now, everybody's threshold for weeds in the garden is different. You know, we, my farm is probably way too weedy for most farmers. My garden's a little too wild. I tend to let things kind of be a little more wild, but I am always thinking in the back of my head about the benefits of pulling something or clearing something out for the other plants. So this is really kind of a look at a ornamental space. Let's go look at the vegetable garden and let's talk about what weeding in the vegetable garden would look like. Okay, so here's a good example of what this kind of thought process would look like in the vegetable garden. So I've got all this beautiful space that's really gotten out of control. And the number one weed I have is this beautiful sweet pea. The reason why I have all these beautiful purple sweet peas is from previous year's productions, production of our Point Loma Pops sweet pea. So obviously, you know, seeds fell on the ground, it reseeded, it looks really pretty, it's really wild, but I really have to get rid of it for several reasons. One, hiding in here are some not so great flowers, okay? And it's taking up all of my space for my tomatoes. I need to get tomatoes in today. I can't plant into this. I need to clear out the space so I can clear out any other um, competing weeds like these guys that are hiding in there. I need to do a typical season amendment, which means add a little compost, you know, work the soil, get it all light and fluffy so I can plant my tomatoes in so they can be nice and happy. I know as a new gardener, especially if your garden doesn't look like this and you've worked season after season to get the soil built, to get your irrigation in and plants are finally starting to thrive. It is so counterintuitive and so difficult to pull up plants. I totally get that. But in the scheme of your big picture of what you're trying to accomplish, sometimes it is necessary. And these sweet peas are a prime example. If we come over here, you can see here that I had to trim back a lot of these sweet peas because they were taking over some of my other flowering plants and you couldn't even see them. So I was really wasting a lot of the beauty in the garden because one plant was being way too dominant. You can see I've already started pulling up a lot of the blooms here. And I have, I have even more work to do to get in here and get these guys out before they take over. Now. Let me show you what it looks like when you really let things get out of control and you have to mow or weed whack and get more mechanical. Let me show you here. Hi, mamas. Come here before they, before they run off. We've gotten so much rain this year that I think they're gonna start developing web feet and learn how to swim. Hi, ladies. So here's an example of where I really kind of screwed the pooch on this one. Very busy year. Haven't been out as much as I would like to be, and I let this get out of control. At this point, I'm gonna have to consider employing some uh, mechanical options here. So weed whacking is one of them, uh, mowing. I don't even own a mower, so that ain't gonna happen. But I will come in here and weed whack, and here, here's that weed that I was talking about. So this is the Chinese chrysanthemum. Um, it's a beautiful yellow bloom. I don't think we have any blooming right now. Really nice, but if you let it go to seed, if you do it in a controlled environment, oh, here it is, here you go. So very pretty, 
but it will take over your garden in zone nine and 10, I guarantee it. So you have to manage that. This is sour grass, also very pretty. You see it all over uh, open spaces in Southern California. But again, if I let it get out of control, I've got a lot more work in the long run of managing that. So I'll come in and weed whack this. And then what I'll do actually is I will weed whack it. Then I will simply just put mulch right on top of that. Guess what I'm doing guys? I'm lasagna mulching, basically layering carbon and, or nitrogen and then carbon so that it can decompose in place. There's no sense in me moving all this to the compost, letting it compost there and then moving it back. So I will weed whack this and then I'll put a heavy layer of mulch on top and just let it compost right there. It'll also make it look a, lo a lot nicer and neater in the garden. So speaking of compost, if you are gonna compost your weeds, some considerations to be had, okay? I would not compost something that's full of seeds. You're only introducing those seeds into your compost which will lie dormant until they are under the right circumstances to germinate. So you really wanna kinda pay attention to that. Everybody's threshold for what they put in their compost is different, okay? Now, I know that our compost gets hot enough and we leave it long enough that I can be a little less careful about what weeds I put in there because over time they're gonna break down. If you don't have a really hot compost or you use your compost really quickly, then I would, be, I would really scrutinize what goes in it because it could sit there and then you're just gonna put it back into the garden where it's going to seed or the seeds are gonna germinate and you're gonna have more weeds to deal with. Okay, so one final thing to really think about, especially those of you who are growing on a farm setting, row crops or row gardening where things are, are really organized, obviously this area doesn't look like that, but you wanna get your weeds when they're at the thread stage, okay? That's really, really important. You're gonna hear that term if you look up any weeding videos, especially on the farm. And basically what it means is you wanna get the weeds when their, their roots are basically like the size of a thread. And the reason being is it's very easy to get, to pull these guys up with the hoe. You can do light cultivation and get them so that when you pull them up, this guy's not gonna survive, okay? Now in contrast to that, if you wait till things get big, like this guy, it takes a lot more work to get him out. It's also harder for him to compost in the ground. And the other thing too is when you let them get this big, they've already really sucked a lot of water and nutrients out of the ground, which you don't want. You wanna get them when they're little so that it's a lot easier. So that term is called thread stage. And I'll, here's an example. This guy here, that is the Chinese chrysanthemum that's everywhere. So. If I get it out at this stage, it's a lot less work for me than if I wait and let it get big, bloom, go to seed, I've got a whole bunch of new problems on my hand. So, you know, old wise farmers always talk about constant shallow cultivation. And the reason why they talk about that is because coming through here and cultivating regularly with a rake, a hoe, you know, however you wanna do it, is gonna get all these little weeds when they're at their thread stage. So you can easily manage them when they're little instead of doing a lot of work when they're bigger. Music